Blog Talk Radio. Namaste and welcome to the Karma for Faith Spiritual Hour. My name is Sandy Devi and I'd like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon, this uh, beautiful Wednesday, February 20th. Uh, today we have a really you know, exciting show that I've been looking forward to. It's Kundalini and Tantra with Prism who is a Shaktipat teacher. Uh, see, that was Gareth on my dog. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's here to talk with us about Kundalini and Tantra and sexual energy and how this all plays into our daily lives. Without any further ado, because we have so much ground to cover today, uh, here's Chrism. Hi, Shandi. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Thank you. I'd like to say hello to to you and and your family and and all of the uh, the friends and listeners that you have out there today. Yes, thank you. Well, yeah. So Kundalini and Tantra, uh, right on right at the beginning, uh, I'm going to suggest that Tantra is a pathway to the Kundalini. It it is a practice and a path and a belief system. Uh, it isn't necessarily um, what some people understand Tantra to be is, you know, different types of sexual uh, expressions designed to make sex better or to enliven a relationship or things of that nature. I do not see Tantra that way. Uh, it is a left-hand path. It is the path of the exaltation of the sacred feminine or the goddess uh, within within our societies, within our world, our species. And so this is a pathway to have the kundalini, which is the sacred male and the sacred female married uh, at the top of the head. Now, I apologize for the phone ringing in the background here. It's not my phone, and it'll just ring three or four times and then stop. Oh, it's no problem. My dog was barking because the UPS <laughs> man came. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, Tantra is a pathway to that marriage, to the marriage of the sacred female and the sacred male. And... Uh, it's considered the left-hand path because as uh, when the kundalini is activated or in the beginning awakening stage, often a person will feel it tangibly on the left side. The, and so over the, over the millennia, uh, people would consider the left side to be feminine and the right side to be masculine. And so, so they you know, attribute the Tantra to the left hand path, the path of the goddess, the path of the of the goddess Shakti, if you follow the uh the Sanskrit information. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. yeah, um well, and the right hand path was the more austere path that, that right. didn't involve or they didn't talk about anyway, sexuality. But the left hand yeah, path well, it, it, it's it. also it's also the more uh, shall we say uh, pointed path. It's, mm. it's, it's the path, the right hand path, would be uh, more of a of a bombastic approach or mental approach or yeah. controlling approach. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's very you know the differences that you have between male and female. Can kind of describe the differences that that can that can occur between the right and the left hand path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sacred male, sacred female. So, so with with tantra, uh, I feel that it is one of the one of the best paths that a person can partake of in their search for the kundalini. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. And mm-hmm. and I would counsel those who are looking at tantra as a as a way to approach uh you know, 
know, mundane sexual improvements, this may not be the best thing to do because uh, depending on the on the karma of an individual, you could activate the kundalini and that would really uh, change your life in a, in, a, in a very big way. Uh, yeah. So if you're going to practice tantra, know what it is and know why it is there and what what results are supposed to come through the practice of a tantra. You'll have a, a teacher like Shanti or other teachers uh, that are available, and they will give you their version of what tantra is, is supposed to be about. Um, I would encourage you to to look to Shanti for the instruction on tantra, simply because I have given her Shakti, but I know that she has the kundalini, and I know that she's she's gone through the preparations and the refinement uh, experiences in order to have the kundalini, and and so therefore, when you when you work with Shanda, you're getting a mixture of divinity and uh, humanity at the same time, and this is very important uh, for people who are on a learning path. To, to be able to receive from those two areas at the same time. So for your listeners and for people who are new to this conversation, uh, I don't know, read Shandi's books. Uh, contact Shandi Devi, uh, you know, and, and express to her your interest in Tantra. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Shandi, what was that? No, I should thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're Kundalini, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kundalini is so important in um, tantric work. Uh, tantra is like um, it's it, it, it's a practice of self-regulated behavior because you don't have a boss. You know, it, it most certainly is. I mean, within it, you. For 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 in, in my opinion, tantra mm-hmm. is about. Energetic exchange. An energetic exchange yeah. happens in many different ways. It's not just sexual. Mm-hmm. Tantra is is a way of exchanging energy through through touch, uh, through your interaction with your environment, whether it is a, of a of a human nature or of a mm-hmm. you know you know in, in, interrelating with the natural environment, the plants, the animals, the air, the water. Uh, right. Tantra, Tantra is all about energetic exchange, and you know, people in the West typically go, "Okay, energetic—that that means sex, right?" So they, <laughs> they jump on the sex, and so there you go. Um, yeah. Sex is uh, about energetic exchange Ooh. as well, but uh, in my understanding of tantra, it is not exclusively a a sexual path. It is a path of energy exchange, and energy exchange is a dynamic that that reaches throughout the entire spectrum of human experience. Yeah. Sexuality is only a part of that. Right. You know, I would but say it's more of a it sensual. Yes. It, I would say it's more of a sensual exchange than sex, sexual. You know, it's sensual in that all of your the elements are activated and all of your senses are you know in top um in top form with regards to the kundalini or well as far as your your, your with your being your body you're oh yeah using your body yeah, yeah. because your body's a laboratory you know right right and and you know as things are working well uh you know the, the tantra will go that much better uh, but yeah. because of the focus that people do put on the sexual aspect of mm-hmm. Tantra, that that's what I want to touch on here because, yeah. you know, this is this is how people see it, right? They see it as a yeah. sexual, and even though it is far beyond and more it's than... It's part sexual, of it. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Sexual is just a part of it. And, and, and so let's just jump right on in, shall we, Shanti? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> so, the sexual, the sexual aspect of of of, uh, of tantra is is a way of 
honoring the sacred male and the sacred female in the mm-hmm. sacred act of sacred sexual uh, interactions. Mm-hmm. And it, it, interaction would not be the right word. It would be sacred sexual devotion. Mm-hmm. Devotion yeah. to, the, to the God yeah. and God of within. That's this, right. This, this level of devotion is is very strong and very very uh it is it, it creates a very fertile uh, uh place for kundalini mm. to activate and so mm-hmm. even if you even if you aren't uh, uh you know an experienced tantrika or, or practitioner of tantra uh your mm. karma your karma which may be pulling you into tantra uh, for the expressed purpose of awakening your kundalini, karma can do that. Yes, yes. You know, the, the karma cafe can, can pull you in and <laughs> give you that kundalini experience. And so, so with tantra, when you're practicing tantra, you need to be aware of that, especially if you're going into it within the the sacred devotional sexual expression. Mm-hmm. Now, with uh, with the devotion, there are certain things that a that a person uh, may want to partake of. If you're a man, you really need to begin to see the woman as a sacred goddess, and yes. as as if you're a woman, you need to see the man as a sacred god, a sacred male. Yeah. There, there is no gender imbalance anymore. No. Okay. You see each other as two parts of a whole, uh, which is what Kundalini is as well. When the sacred male and sacred female come together, the two mm-hmm. parts, the two become one, and the one become two. So mm-hmm. tantra, tantra is a way of the physical bodies joining uh, at the chakra point. Okay, so when a person is engaged in sexual tantra, uh, the 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 couple, if you're if you're doing it as a couple, uh, your chakras are in contact with each other, uh, especially as you assume certain positions. And one of the positions that I'll suggest people assume is the Mayathuna position. And, uh, yeah, Shani, you're familiar yeah. with that, right? Yes, uh-huh. where so the my, woman strides the gentleman, and he he's sitting with his legs crossed, and she strides him, and and that's right. very good for activating the chakras. Right, right. And it's then as that position is given, uh, the man uh, brings himself inside of the of the woman, and holds still. At the same time that this this uh, position is given, there is a position of locking the eyes, or what they call tantric eyes. And as you as you stare at each other in in a loving uh, expression and an an expression of honoring the divine in each other, uh, what happens above is is replicated below uh, with the reproductive organs. The reproductive organs mm-hmm. joined as uh, as the uh, the ancient uh, understanding of as above, so below. Mm-hmm. So as above, as you as your as as your eyes are engaged. I want to mention something about eyes and the visual understandings. Eyes and vision are expressive organs of contact. Vision has weight. Vision is a a uh, malleable organ, very similar to your hands and your fingers. When you reach out and grasp something, you're feeling what it is you're you're touching with your skin, and so you're seeing with the sense organs of the of the skin and the nervous system and the same goes with the eyes when you stare at something 
your visual field wraps around that that target of your vision and sees the different hues in in a in what it would be described as a visual tactility so uh, to to really uh get into visual tactility if uh, if a uh, uh, if a if a person is bathing and somebody else is spying on them, they can feel that visual incursion on their privacy without being able to see the person. They feel the mm-hmm. visual field of the person who is watching them bathe. Right? Mm-hmm. It's very similar. Uh, so when you when you when you're looking at a person in a tantric gaze, it's it's a two way street rather than a one way street. It, the she is looking at him and he is looking at her, mm-hmm. and they're both coming into this with the same, or, or you know, a very similar loving devotional context. It won't be exactly the same because they're two different people, okay? Mm-hmm. But it will be similar. It will be similar in what is given. And as that connection is made above and the connection below is also made, mm-hmm. a, a circuit is... Exactly, created. yes. And this circuit, this sacred circuit, is what can spark a kundalini activation in one or both of the people. Okay. And mm-hmm. if you don't know anything about the kundalini, then then you really want to do some educating. And I will suggest, if I may, Shandi, give yes. a website out. Yes, please do. Uh, yeah, educate yourself about the Kundalini. Go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and that's the number one. So Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. Go there, read the articles, look at the symptom charts, see if you qualify, see if your symptoms are are coming for you. Uh, which means the Kundalini would be coming for you and begin to to embrace that with joy and with love and with happiness mm-hmm. and, and you know encourage the Kundalini to come into you uh, and don't be afraid I mean it will take control of you it is a very tactile uh, intelligent force it's it's the divine the actual tactile divine uh, mm-hmm. coming into your body and taking your body into its embrace and beginning a transformative uh, change upon all of your body systems. Okay, and this is a this is the divine made flesh or the flesh made divine, and this is this is what the evolutionary goal of the human being is. So we are we are wired to have kundalini and tantra. Tantra is that one one of the most effective practices that a person can have in order to bring themselves into the the, the divine embrace of the Kundalini. Okay. So uh, as we get into the mechanics of, of the Mayathuna position, and there are many 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 positions, and I would have you talk with Shandi about you know some of the other positions uh that that can be used this way um, the Susan, woman have, hmm? i'm sorry no go ahead, go ahead. The, the woman is in the in the sanskrit uh uh context it's called shakti and the man is called the shiva and as as the as the, as the the male organ is given into the female uh, body in her organ. The male organ is is given to hold still, stillness. And the shakti or the female body is becomes the dancer. And so the shakti dances upon the Shiva and the Shiva provides the, the the platform for her dance to be given. So how this translates is when is when the the man is inside the woman, 
he doesn't thrust, he doesn't move. He, he maintains his discipline. He, yes, he, and he maintains. He maintains his eyesight. He maintains that gaze. Now, she's going to be moving. She's the one who does all the movement. She twists and 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 bounces and just does all these different things. And she is the dancer. That is. That is what her job is. That is part of her natural expression. And yet, even as she does this, her eyes are locked in a beloved gaze upon his. Okay. Mm-hmm. And as this goes on, uh, the the uh, the fluidic expression from the man is going to want to to burst forth and. And I am going to say, no, no, no. Yeah. You do not spill the seed in this type of a practice. Yeah. You allow the seed to come up, and then you, it backs down. Okay, and yeah. so if you if you need to disengage, then you disengage the lower part of the body, but you still stay yes. engaged. And, and there are you ways know. to halt that, uh, that uh, desire. And convert the energy. So yeah, those are uh, techniques they can follow. Well, one of the techniques is to, as, as you know, in the room and in the area where you are, you mm-hmm. you have a glass of water, and as you still lock your gaze upon your beloved, you take a sip of that water. What that does is. That takes the focus of the physical body off of the fluidic expression. Mm. Okay, that's a very easy mm. technique. You just get a drink of water. Mm. But as you drink the water, you're, you're also drinking the divine gaze. And so, once again, you, you mm-hmm. create an energetic ex- exchange and the gaze becomes made of, of the, the visual uh, cortex becomes a fluidic cortex without spilling the seed and so as you drink that water or as you give the water to her to drink and she gives it to you to drink if you're you know if you're the man then then yes once again you you've replicated that now with regards to the actual manipulation of the of the male organ in order to to uh to to have a discipline there you want to use the the uh the the PVC uh, valves in the in the body the the uh, um, Kegel muscles mm-hmm. the Kegel muscles as you as you as uh, the Kegel muscles you can feel when you're urinating uh, or any any of the uh, the defecation or urination as you squeeze off those last drops of urine you're using the the, the PVC valves in the body, and these are the Kegel muscles. You can also use those same valves with regards to, if you're a man, keeping the semen in the body, keeping the the seed in the body. Now, the, the pre-ejaculate will come forth anyway, and that is supposed to come forth. That clear fluid, the prostatic fluid, is supposed to come forth, and that holds a lot of energy as well. And yet it doesn't deplete the man of 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 the energy that he needs to to maintain his high spiritual awareness and to feed the kundalini as it comes. Uh what that does is that allows the transference uh to be given. It allows the sacred circuit to be completed without the 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 seminal expression occurring. Uh, you, under, could, you understand what I mean, Shandi? Yeah, right. Uh, I, we have someone on the line. Let, let's see if um, we have, have any questions for us before we um, go into the archive uh, version. Okay. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Did you have any questions for Chrism? No, I don't. I'm actually just enjoying listening. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Hang on. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for listening. Yeah, so so there are seven 
for, from the male standpoint, there are seven different fluids that make up mm -hmm. uh, uh, male sperm. Okay. Uh, and you know, and then you look at that, you know, seven different chakras and all of this stuff. And so there's a sacred mathematics that is occurring within a within a tantric context. And uh, the woman correspondingly has seven different fluids that allow her to complement the male divine expression. You know, the female divine expression and the male divine expression are equally equally valued and equally uh expressed. Uh, with regards to the, the saving the seed for the man, uh, this is important, but it takes practice, and don't expect it to be achieved right off the bat, really. And I don't want you to use rings or any kind of an artificial... Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. That, that can be very damaging to, to the male organ. So... So please be aware of that, and and watch, watch. Uh, make sure that your sexual expression is devotional. And you so so. Let's look at what is devotional meaning. What what is the what is the meaning of the word devotion? In the context that I'm suggesting, devotion is a level of worship. Worship. Yes, that's what I would say. Uh, Loving worship mm -hmm. for the the divine in your partner. Yeah. Loving and and I don't care if you're you know I you know Kundalini doesn't really care if you're same sex couple uh, you know uh, you know it doesn't it doesn't as long as love is there that is mm -hmm. the most important quality. Uh, someone will be the receiver. Someone will be the giver. That is a part of the natural flow. Uh, but in our society, we have very many, many, many different uh, levels of, of, of uh, sexual identification. Uh -huh. And I don't want people to be put off uh, by homophobia or transgender phobia or any of this stuff. Uh, these are all just elements of ego uh, uh, judgmentalism, and they don't, that kind of judgmentalism does not really fit well inside of Tantra. Now, of course, you know, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that. We have Tantric purists from, from the Hindu faith that say, oh, well, first of all, even in the Hindu faith, you know, the, the left-hand path, the Tantric path is is not a uh, prescribed path to take. Oh, no. <laughs> it's still very, very... Yeah. Uh, Conservative is there. So about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Conservative. Uh, most of the Americans are. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So, but but within the, the tantric, uh, some of the some of the uh, Brahma-based tantric uh, uh, masters and schools, you know, they'll they'll, they'll be very very uh, gender specific. And, you know, you they want. Uh, the person to be a man or a woman, and da 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 da. But I'm suggesting because I have Kundalini awake, it's in me now, and it doesn't care. It well, cares. Yeah, it cares exactly. about your. Life. It, it, it's about energy more than anything else than gender, you know. Yeah, it's 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 about oneness and and, and love, yeah. and grace and. Uh, the acceptance of evolution. Uh, it will it will look at a person's karmic uh, um, uh, design, and and it will see you know reasons why people are doing what they're doing, and and it's more interested in those reasons rather than the results of those reasons. Mm. If that makes any sense to anyone. Yes. Where is um, <laughs> we're going to be um, off. Uh, from the live show in about a minute, but the rest of the show can be heard later um, in the archives. So I'd like to invite you all to come back and check it out. So, but yeah. because Chris and I will continue talking. <laughs> okay, so who okay knows very, good. <laughs> yeah. very good. Yeah. So yeah. So so 
uh, the Kundalini doesn't really have a, a homophobic attitude or a transgender phobic or any kind of a phobic. It doesn't, you know, child abuse it does not accept. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, that is not allowed. Any, any, anything that would harm a child it, or yeah. or an animal that that is not uh, appreciated at all because that is not a loving embrace. Right. And that is not. Uh, that is that is a, more of a of a power over another being type of attitude, and mm-hmm. and that is not that is not uh, um, accepted. Um, no, not at all. So so know that, and, and pornography also is not a typical venue uh, for any expression either. No, um, because these all devalue women. Well, no, 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 not just women. Not just women. Um, pornography is tr- transgender. It, it goes male or female, and and uh, it devalues the sexual act. It devalues the the. Uh, it, it does indeed devalue women, and it does indeed devalue men, and mm-hmm. it also devalues the the sacred activity mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. of of. Of sexual expression as well, and it gets kind of turned into to domination scenarios. Mm-hmm. Now, some people, as they begin to come into the Kundalini through tantra, will feel a a, a a very large increase in their sexual appetite in their in their sexual expression, mm-hmm. and um, they will not know. Or, or have a very healthy outlet for that. And so they may start looking in pornography because it is, you know, sexually stimulating. And and uh, they may feel, oh, gosh, you know, what's going on with me? How come I'm, you know, this businessman who's never been involved in pornography before all of a sudden finds himself in, in a pornography-type uh, environments? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I've had people come to me with those concerns and, and I and I do steer them away from pornography, not pornography that is exalting of the woman or the man or the sexual act, but but the pornography that is say of a devaluing uh, you know nature. Mm-hmm. These things I will steer them away from. Uh, yeah. With regards to that and the tantra. Uh, the tantra doesn't really when when the tantra is being used and practiced in the form of of, uh, of inviting the kundalini to come. You see, this is very different than much of the tantra that that happens around me here in Northern California. You know, much of the tantra that happens around me here, you know, people are just turned on by being naked in front of each other, which is <laughs> that's natural. That's a natural thing. But in the context of, you know, having a big tantric symposium and a bunch of uh, naked uh, middle-aged people are on the floor, you know, beginning to to have sex with each other, um, this is not uh, what like I... That's like an orgy. Huh? That's like an orgy. Then. I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, an orgy... Well, oh, I, I guess it it seems like like a like an organized or 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 orgy that they're using as a they're using tantra as a way. They're to calling have it. it tantra. Yeah. yeah exactly. 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 <laughs> and the, you know the the, the housewives and the house husbands and you know they're kind of tired of having sex with each other, so they want to have sex with other people and and oh you know let's let's do the cool tantra thing you know and it's like oh please. Yeah. That I see just as another uh, another form of pornography, and and yeah. you know I'm not judging it against them. It's just not what I'm seeing within within the context of, of inviting Kundalini. No, and actually with Tantra, it becomes when you have sex with one person, um, it it actually it, it doesn't get bored. It gets actually better. There you go. There you go. There you go. Because, you know, people are not so 
easy to to figure out and and you know a human being is an amazing landscape and oceanscape i mean there you know you got five expressions to a human being right your physical your emotional your mental your psychological and your spiritual and these these are like planets of discovery <laughs> yes i mean it's it to 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 really know a person and to embrace that person in a loving way <laughs> monogamy works monogamy oh works. yes it's yes. not the only way well, Lord Shiva, he was monogamous. I mean, he he returns lifetime after lifetime with the same wife, but she has different names. <laughs> and that that's what the scriptures tell you, too. It only works when you can create uh, and build a momentum of energy with one person, because otherwise you've got to divide yourself up. I mean, that that would be you'd have to be really, really, really a superman to be able to handle all that. Well, um, I, you know, I, I can't judge polygamy either uh, in a negative way. I know it works for some people. It works for some cultures, and so, so, and I know that many, many of the uh, the the races that have gone by practice polygamy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I'm not I'm not going to make a judgment. I just I, I will say that polygamy works and, and and monogamy works as well. And so, in our culture, uh, monogamy is is the the better known practice. And uh, and there, it, just as Shanti said, you know, I, I I agree with her completely. I mean, it doesn't get boring unless you yourself make it boring. Unless you're not willing to explore a person in the most intimate way, mm-hmm. if you're not willing to go into their feelings and into their mind and into their ideas and into their uh, potentials and into the divine within, you know, and mm-hmm. and as you explore your own divinity within and you're exploring their divinity within them, as it expresses through them, my gosh, you know, you have universes of discovery. Yes. And enjoy to partake of, and uh, this is this is very this is very important. However, you don't need to have a partner to practice tantra either. Right, right. You can be an individual person, uh, male or female, and there are specific techniques that can be used to bring your uh, your path into a kundalini alignment. And one of those. Practices, if I may say, Shanti? Yes, please. One of those practices is what I call the safety protocols. Now, this isn't specifically sexual. Not all tantra, as we mentioned at the beginning of the program, is sexual. Uh, Sexuality in tantra is really a fraction of what tantra represents. Once again, it's It's all about energetic transfer. And as you transfer energy with your eyes, you also transfer energy with your touch, you also transfer energy with your breath, you also transfer energy with your voice, you know, you also transfer energy with your intents and your thoughts, you transfer Mm -hmm. energy with your fluids, you transfer energy in so many different ways that sex is just part of that equation. It is not the whole equation. And one of the uh, one of the techniques that I like to, to suggest people who are looking for Kundalini through Tatra is the safety protocols for for uh, for Kundalini and, and if you go to the website I mentioned the Kundalini Awakening Systems the number one dot com uh, Look at the menu on the on the left side, and you'll see the safety protocols there. And practice those protocols daily. Though that is an activation platform right there, and it does it does have a devotional quality to it. As you're doing pranayama, you're you're in a, you're in a, a very devotional state. And, and if you're a male, then you're then you and you devote yourself to the sacred feminine. If you're female, you devote yourself to the sacred male. Okay. <clears throat> and those those 
attributes of your divine nature will begin to make themselves known. But you have to do all of the practices. You have to do it daily. And it's, you know, the whole thing takes a little less than an hour. And if you if you if you elongate it, it can it can last longer. And I do suggest that you elongate it. If you would care to look at my videos on YouTube, um, you can get to that channel by going uh, Chrisum and then the number zero Kundalini. So it looks like Chrisum O Kundalini on oh. YouTube, and I have about 224 videos. Wow. A few of them are are on. Uh, are on the uh, the practice of the safeties, the five Tibetans, mm-hmm. the nature. Uh, but getting back to the familiar take on Tantra, which is between uh, uh, the genders, um, I will suggest that as you... Now, we'll, we're going to get into some of the more extreme uh, levels of Tantra. The tongue. The tongue can be ex, you know extended into the other person and this is this is just as intimate as as the the tantric gaze or the reproductive organs being joined uh this this actually presents the opportunity for the first for for a triangle of experience a trinity of experience you have the eye lock you have the tongue lock, and you have the genital lock. Now, I may not be phrasing these ideas in the ways that your typical tantric coach or teacher would phrase them. My information comes from the kundalini in me. Okay, It gave me this quality of information because it knew I would be talking with Western audiences. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It knew I would be talking with people that were not familiar or even wanting to be familiar with with uh, uh, Eastern Indian uh, techniques or languages or belief systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is for people who are happy being a Christian or happy being a, uh, uh, you know, whatever they are uh, on mm-hmm. a spiritual level or happy being a, a human being. And, and, you know, don't necessarily want to 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 bring themselves into the religion of of, of what uh, some of the other tantric teachers would would espouse. Mm-hmm. So I don't come from that context at all. Uh, although I do use some of the terminology as does Shandi. Shandi, how, do you, uh, how, what is your context when you teach tantra? Um. Well, I try to. Give it a Western um, flair w- within the within the context of the uh, Sanskrit terminology and all that. Only because it's, for for me, it's easier to uh, define using um, Sanskrit terms some of the words. But, yeah, I do the same uh, thing. I, I do yeah. the same thing. Some but, some yeah. there, some some words don't exist in the English language that do in the exactly. in the in the Sanskriti language. Yeah. And it is the Sanskriti, not Sanskrit. Uh just that's so right, that's right. Yeah. The people were the Sanskriti the silent silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's how I teach the Tantra and I've had a I do have a Tantra group on Yahoo has about 300 people in it. And um, it uh, in, in there, I, I, you know, from what I'm given to teach through my kundalini is what I give uh, to those people on that group. And uh, uh, it's been fairly quiet as of late, but, mm-hmm. you know... Well, this uh, is probably activated. <laughs> <laughs> Tantra, Tantra, Tantra is a challenge. Back. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we have one minute. <laughs> so you, you'll have to come back, and we need to uh, finish this conversation. This is been oh, really oh, we're coming up to the end of it. That's right. I'm yeah. Sorry. I know. Well, I want to thank you. I want to. I, I want to thank you, Shandi, for uh, for this opportunity to talk about tantra. I don't get that much of an opportunity with it. Uh, uh, so now you thank will. You. 
Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're very welcome, and thank you. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, bye-bye, everyone.